I've been making videos about bikes for over seven years now, and I've used a lot of action cameras. They're great for filming stuff on road bikes, mountain bikes, trips where you don't want to be carrying a big camera with you. And every year, the new releases have been getting better and better. These are the two best on the market right now, the GoPro Hero 12 and the DJI Osmo Action 4. But how do they compare? On this video, we're focusing on real world performance of these cameras. So I bought this cool thing from Amazon, which means you can mount them next to each other and Look at that! <laughs> the stabilization in action cameras was revolutionized by GoPro when they released the Hero 7 a few years ago. It changed the game and it's been the benchmark for action camera manufacturers ever since. I still haven't got a clue how it works. It's some kind of black magic. Even when you're looking at the screen on the back of the camera, it's buttery smooth. It's not even doing it in post-production. It blows my mind. In the GoPro, you're looking at Hyper Smooth, their version of stabilization. And in the DJI image, it's called Rocksteady 3.0. You can see in the images here, they're pretty much the same. They're on par, which is really impressive from the DJI who've been making cameras like this for a shorter amount of time. You can see in the clips here, we're out riding our bikes on British roads, which are covered in potholes. So there is a lot of road buzz and vibrations going on. I'm flipping the camera around to talk to it. You can see firsthand that both of the cameras are dealing with this extremely well. Both of these cameras offer a boost mode to make it even more stable, but this crops into the image so you lose some of the wide field of view, which is a shame. So I tend to stick with the normal stabilization, which is way enough if you're shooting on a bike. Low light. This is a hard category for action cameras with tiny little sensors because they've got to cram all that technology and very small. The amount of light from the outside world hitting that sensor is going to be much less than a big camera like I'm shooting on now, which has meant that historically action cameras have always struggled in low light. I'm going to play a clip here of me walking from the nicely lit studio into our storage room and old podcast studio, which is much, much darker. And you can see exactly how the cameras cope. This is actually a very good low light test. Chances are you won't be shooting with one of these cameras in the complete dark at nighttime very much. Whoa, you just slipped out. Gray skies and shadow underneath the trees definitely makes action cameras struggle. So I'd be interested to see which performs better, the DJI in this situation or the GoPro. Comment section down below, what do you reckon? Can't feel my fingers, Jimmy. You can also see a clip here, which I filmed in my kitchen with a very bright light source. I had the cameras on to start with and then press record and the DJI automatically switched to night mode. And as you can see, it's made a massive difference to how it performs. The GoPro, as far as I'm aware, only has this in one of the time-lapse modes. So a big plus for the DJI in this category. Sound quality. I thought I'd actually use the cameras to film this section. We're inside the studio now. It's treated for audio badly, so there's a bit of an echo in here. Our fancy expensive microphone, which costs about 300 pounds on its own, deals with this audio situation quite well. However, the microphones inside these cameras need to be much smaller and a lot more basic. So here's what the GoPro sounds like indoors, and here's what the DJI sounds like indoors. That's all well and good, but you're not gonna be using these cameras indoors very much. So, riding audio test for these two cameras. This is what the GoPro sounds like. And this is what the DJI sounds like. Which one, in your opinion, sounds better? Here is a stationary audio test for the GoPro and the DJI. This is what the DJI sounds like. And this is what the GoPro sounds like. Hey, Jimmy, you're further away from me. What? Say something. GoPro audio test. DJI audio test. Hello, everybody. I am talking relatively loud, mind. If I was, if I was actually having a conversation with you, I'd be talking at this volume. All of these audio tests have been carried out with the camera's automatic audio settings. Wind reduction has been on auto. However, if you are using one of these cameras outside, I would recommend buying some little pieces of fluff from Amazon. You can stick these on with 3M tape. I think there's three on the GoPro, two or three on the DJI Action. Make sure you cover them all up and these little wind fluffs will improve the audio quality outdoors significantly. So I'd really recommend buying a set of these. They're like 10 quid and they make a world of difference. To be completely fair, I haven't used these for this test. So you're getting the raw audio as if you just bought the camera and switched it on. 
Now, this is just my opinion here. I'm sure people might disagree with me. I think the DJI feels better. The mounting system on the DJI is a magnetic clip, which is very confidence inspiring, fits to the bottom of the camera securely, and you can have multiple of these, which you have to buy extra, to be able to switch the camera quickly just with a magnet in between different positions. So if you've got a chest mount and a bike mount, you can switch it between the two very quickly. The GoPro's attachments are a bit more plasticky and it's built in to the action camera, two little pieces that you fold out. They feel a little bit flimsy and they haven't changed in design from the last two iterations of the GoPro. As long as you tighten up the screw really tight, then it does feel secure. It's not a massive problem, but for the sake of this video, if we're comparing the two, I think the DJI has it. All of the accessories that come with it and the feeling of these little caps that you have to undo to access the battery case, they feel better than the GoPro, but both of them function absolutely fine. The DJI just feels more premium. Price, a very important thing. We're in the UK, the GoPro is £399.99 and the DJI is £379.99. That's both for the basic packages, which come with a charging cable, a battery, and the mounting system. And that's pretty much it. There's a load of different bundles you can buy with extra accessories for the cameras. If you're doing loads of shooting, I would recommend getting spare batteries because sometimes you can stuff the camera in your pocket and forget to turn it off. And then your whole day of shooting is over because you've recorded 40 minutes of a black inside of your pocket, which isn't great. Do you mind? I'm trying to film. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to film a video. Nick, which is better, that one or that one? I don't know anything about the camera specs, but I like the look of the GoPro. It's smaller. Then this DJI I think it looks quite nice. DJI. I like my drones and all my stuff. But everything else I've got is DJI, so that's probably what I'd go for. DJI is better because Nick likes drones. Reliability. GoPro have historically had issues with reliability. I'm pleased to discover that in my week of testing. I have had absolutely zero crashes from any of these cameras. In the past, the cold weather, which we have in bucket loads here in Newcastle, affects the cameras quite drastically. And I think it's down to the battery technology. So GoPro historically came with these blue batteries. They're now supplying them with these white batteries, which is their cold weather battery. This has come as standard in this Hero 12. So I think all the cameras are supplied with these white batteries, which makes a massive difference to the reliability. The DJI also claims that this is a cold weather battery and goes down to super low temperatures. So both of the cameras have been absolutely perfect in terms of reliability over all my testing. Connection to the app has been fast and responsive. The touch screens on both of the devices have been really responsive and good, even in wet weather. Out here, I've been flicking through the menus, changing to slow-mo, changing the wide setting on both of these cameras. I have to say, I prefer the menu on the DJI Action Osmo 4 because it's just easier to use. It feels more responsive. Getting the settings that you really need quickly has been easier on that camera. Having said that, the GoPro menu is absolutely fine, totally usable, and both are brilliant. GoPro have really fixed this in their last couple of iterations of camera, where they changed the processor and made it faster. If you look at well-lit, outside, nice bright footage of both of these cameras in 4K, they're very, very close. However, as soon as you go underneath the trees and the situation becomes a bit more low light, the DJI does look better, in my opinion. Because of where we live and the amount of cloudy days we have, I mean, outside right now, it looks like the sun's going down, but it's 11.47 in the morning. If I wanted to shoot a video right now, I would pick up the DJI over the GoPro purely for the better low light performance. The GoPro does shoot in higher resolution. You can do 5.6K. However, some of the features are restricted in that setting and 4K, provides plenty of pixels. I would be hesitant to ever shoot in 5.6K, especially as the file sizes will be absolutely massive. But if you have a very specific use, which requires 5.6K, like you wanna crop into the image really close, the GoPro wins that category. Both of these cameras have been really impressive. So I was out riding with Jimmy this morning and both of these cameras were 100% charged at the start of that ride. Currently, the GoPro is at 64% battery, and the DJI is at 68% battery. So they're pretty close, but the DJI has pipped the GoPro. What is worth mentioning here is over the last week or so, I noticed how much faster the DJI is at charging. So they claim 48 minutes for 100% charge from zero to 100, whereas the GoPro, it's a couple of hours. If that matters to you, then the DJI is a better choice. However, a lot of the time, 
I use up all my batteries and then I charge them overnight, so it's not gonna matter at all. It depends how you use your camera. So what's the conclusion? They're both fantastic cameras. The technology of these things has improved so much in the last few years. I would happily grab either of these if I was out for a ride. They have horizon lock. They have time-lapse features. They're bomb-proof. You can drop these on the floor and nothing happens. They're waterproof. You can ride in horrible, shitty weather and your camera's gonna last ages. It blows my mind how good these cameras are getting and I'm looking forward to the day where I can replace this big, massive, annoying camera with a camera like this and I don't think it's gonna take that long. I hope this comparison was useful. Please let us know in the comments what you think looks better. The side-by-side -side should give you a pretty good idea, and I hope this video was useful. If you'd like to see more videos like this on this channel, please subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.